All right, guys, uh, I want to point out some more consistencies. Happy sunshine to you all. Uh, back here, we're looking at the DC transcript from the identity hearing, and we've also got up the grand jury testimony here. Um, and we're looking at Parker Steele. I, I've been diving a little bit deeper into whoever this is. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, I can't find anything through the FBI on an agent named Parker Steele. There's no, there's no directory or list of FBI agents in their email addresses or anything like that that, that I can find. If you guys can find something, uh, I'd be very interested in seeing that. Uh, you know, what I've been doing with these videos is... is reading through these documents and just noting what I see and and that uh, that has kind of turned into picking this thing apart because there is there's so much here to pick apart I, I can't believe I'm looking at, at a real case um, I'm gonna read through what Parker testifies to as his work experience and I'm gonna do that for each document and then I'm going to talk about the discrepancies that I find therein. Um, let's start over here with the first time that he's testifying. He says his name is Parker Still and the, he just says last name S-T-I-L-L. -L. Um, but but uh, here he's spelling out both of his names. Why? Why did he only just spell out his last name there? That's, uh, was he told just to, it says spell your, state and spell your name for the record. So, so here he fails to do that. He doesn't spell Parker. I wonder, I wonder how Parker is, is truly spelled in his head when he's sitting on the stand here. I think that's in question. So, and what do you do? I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm assigned, currently assigned to the Knoxville division. Yeah, it, it seems like anytime there's this double hyphen here, it's either uh, an interruption or a pause in speaking, uh, if I'm decoding that correctly. So, and what do you do? I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I'm assigned. Um, how come he's pausing here? Like, I really would love to hear the audio of this, but I don't know if that's even available to us for this grand jury hearing. Uh, that, there's a lot of information that, that's cut out and replaced by two hyphens here. And, and it may be material, it may not be, but if this guy's been a special agent with the FBI and he's been assigned to Knoxville, that's just going to flow right off of your tongue. He's not going to have to pause or think about this. I don't know, maybe he had to clear his throat. I don't know. That's why I want to hear the tape or the recording. And how long have you done that? Approximately five years. What type of experience did you have prior to being in the FBI? That's a, that's a pretty... That's a pretty direct question. What type of experience did you have? Prior to joining the FBI, I was an attorney for approximately seven and a half years, still licensed to practice law. All right, so he's still an attorney and he's still licensed to practice law. And that's gonna be important here. During my time as an attorney, I did both prosecution and I've done criminal defense work. Also a graduate of Army JAG School in Charlottesville, Virginia. And, do, and that's, that's, that's his whole answer for uh, what type of experience did you have prior to being with the FBI? And then they move right to the next question, and do you have a specialization at the FBI? Are you in a squad? Do you investigate specific type of cases? And he's just, yes, ma'am. I handle primarily white collar cases. And he just goes right into that. Um, he doesn't ever return back to talking about his experience or, or really 
give a complete answer here to uh, what his experience was prior to the FBI, and here's the proof of that. Three weeks later in the identity hearing, where he, he spells out his entire first name where he didn't overhear in the grand jury, he misspells his last name or he spells it differently than he did in the grand jury hearing. And, and let's take a look at, at his answers uh, about introducing himself over here in the identity hearing. And where are you employed? Currently employed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Knoxville Division. So wow, that just flowed right off there where over here, there's a pause. So, you know, maybe he's got his lines right, at least this one now. How long have you been employed with the FBI's Knoxville Division? Approximately five years. And what, if any, specializations do you have? Currently worked and have worked since I started in Knoxville on the White Collar Crime Squad. So it's not like he's been shifting around within the FBI, okay? He's been in Knoxville the entire time he's been with the FBI and on the white collar crime squad. So I don't know why he's fumbling over here in line 13. Um, you know, maybe he just cleared his throat. I don't know. But that, I wonder, I wonder what, what's behind those two hyphens. And were you employed before your employment with the FBI in Knoxville? Yes, ma'am. Before the FBI in Knoxville, I was, I was a practicing attorney for approximately seven and a half years. During that time, I did both prosecution and defense work. Also served as a short time as a pro tem municipal court judge, as well as I have a, I'm a graduate of JAG school. Served overseas in Afghanistan as part of Operation Enduring Freedom as chief legal assistant in Kandahar Airfield. Wow, so over here, the grand jury never got to hear that he was a judge. They just heard that he was a lawyer and an FBI agent. As, as we'll find out later in this uh, grand jury, they start asking questions about stuff that doesn't make sense to them. And, uh, and, and you know, they seem like there's some bright people in there, but, but I feel like they get shut down. I haven't read through this entire grand jury uh, transcript, but, but I feel like the grand jury kind of gets shut down by I, whoever it was, the, the judge, I guess. Uh, I can't remember. But, you know, <laughs> after we get done with this uh, identity hearing transcript, we're going to go back and we're going to read through the grand jury testimony because, wow, these two are just so woven together. So the big question is, how come the grand jury didn't get to know that this was a cop, a lawyer, and a judge? Like... Where's the separation of powers, okay? How come he left out his uh, legal, uh, chief legal assistant uh, from Operation Enduring Freedom in the Kandahar Airfield? That seems like a pretty, pretty big resume bullet point to me. So in looking through Parker still a little bit further with all, these, all of these inconsistencies, I was able to find here at legaldirectories.com that there is a Parker H. Still. And it says Parker H. Still is a lawyer in Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, I don't know what this Mississippi out-of-state listing Parker Still is, but it lists an address here of 8310 Harbor Cove Drive, Knoxville, Tennessee also lists a phone number here. Well, I put in 8310 Harbor Cove Drive and I found 
oh, this is interesting. It's, it's just a residence. It's a house. And when you click on that link, you can see that uh, purportedly this is Parker H. Stills' house here. Three bedroom, two and a half bath, almost 2,600 square feet. I wonder how many, how much land it's on. Anyways, uh, it's not on the market right now. $268,000, or sorry, $278,000 is the estimated price. But, I mean, how amazing is this that, uh, that you can see what his house looks like? If this is, uh, if Parker H. Still is the is the same guy that's uh, testifying for the FBI in Hat J's matter. You know, I I didn't have tools like this when I was a cop. Holy cow! To to just find an FBI agent's house and and pull shit up online like is this really his house? I can't I can't imagine that. So, anyways, if there are people in Knoxville uh, that are in Heather's camp, I think it would be very important to go out to go out to this residence, knock on the door, and see who it, who answers. Is is it the same dude that is uh, that was in the identity hearing? Is it the same dude that was in the grand jury? Are are those two people the same? Do we even know? Uh, I don't, I am unaware if there were any of the same people uh, in the Knoxville grand jury courtroom that were also in the DC identity hearing courtroom. And, and I think that's a really important point. Like, when when Heather gets to Knoxville and into that courtroom, uh, that will ostensibly be the first time that we'll actually have verification from her camp that, that this appears to be the same person that was in Washington, D.C., or no, it, it appears to be different. Um, <clears throat> so, a Parker H. Still, it, it's really... It really kind of blows my mind now that we're in an identity hearing and at no time during Mr. Bose's uh, cross-examination of FBI agent Still or Steele did, did he ever ask uh, what Parker's full name was, if he had a middle name or anything like that. Uh, this guy can't identify himself. We can't identify himself. We don't even know if there are common people among both of these courtrooms that can say that, hey, this was the same, <clears throat> wow, excuse me, this was the same person that was in both of these courtrooms. Is this the same dude that was testifying the same physical body as the guy over here? We don't know, and I don't know if any of the people that were here were over here. Do you guys see the? You guys see this problem? This is an identity hearing, supposedly focused on Heather Ann Tucci's identity, and and nobody's looking at the identity of Parker Steele. We have to know who he is if we're going to trust anything that he tells us about the identity of Hat J. And, and we just keep finding more and more inconsistencies. So I am unaware of any law enforcement officer who is a lawyer who still has a license to practice law. This seems like a big conflict of interest. This is why there's a separation of powers. Means, means this guy can can start actions, he can also represent actions through the court process, and then he can make judgments on them. 
There's no, there's no way that this guy should be operating. He's backwards integrating to, to go all the, or not integrating. He's just moving backwards down the chain. How much do you think an FBI agent makes? Let's pop that in here. FBI agent salary. The median salary for an FBI agent is $64,000 a year. <clears throat> you know, take off your taxes <clears throat> and and I wonder You know, I I mean, who knows what the state of his financing is on his house here? But he looks like he's got a lake view. He's got big yard. He's got a deck. We scrolled through all these pictures. That, you know, it's a it's a gorgeous house. So if you've already been a lawyer, on both the prosecution and the defense, and you've been a judge, why on earth? Are you gonna go back to the FBI? And and even more so, just to I know county deputies that are working in jails in California who make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. They don't even have to try. There is so much overtime offered that they can basically, as, as much as they want to keep working and keep putting that uniform on, and as much as they want to sit in the jail and run those modules, they'll just, they'll just keep getting paid. And there's not a whole lot of people that want to do that. So, you know, they, they jack the price up. They, there's a shortage of them in California, at least there was when I left. I can imagine that you would make a lot more money than $64,000 a year as either a prosecuting attorney or a defense attorney. I'd imagine you'd make more than $64,000 a year as a judge. Why is this guy working for the FBI? I I'd love to I'd love somebody to dig into this who's in the Knoxville area. Maybe call this guy up. See if he's still taking cases. Is he available for, for being retained? Like, like, let's find out. Who, who the hell is this? This doesn't sit right with me, guys. <clears throat>